Okay, Ross, first of all, man, what, what is this? You, you insist on this three letter name, but your whole name is Roscoe. Now, tell, what's going on with this? Because I've never liked that name. What do you mean you never liked that name? What I said. Who gave you that name? I guess my mother, my father must have given it to me. That's the only reason I don't change it, because I loved him and respected him. But I think that's one of the goofiest names in, in, the, in the lexicon. <laughs> what did your father do that, 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 that he would name you, name you Roscoe? I don't know. I asked my mother, what did you, I asked mama, were you high? And she getting mad. I said, what, <laughs> did you smoke a joint or something? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, dude, well, hold on a second. I don't, I don't want to crack on you, but you, you kind of old man. Now, if you told your mom, mom and daddy was getting high, what, what, what are you talking about? They what? weren't getting high, I was messing with her. You was messing with her. What did they say to that? What, what was they they didn't say anything, daddy was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Mama said, and she, only time I ever saw her high was when she had one and a half glasses of wine. Mm -hmm. And she was still let, uh, very, very lucid. Mm -hmm. Well, where, now where, where, where did she come from? Where did your daddy come from? My daddy came from, he, he says he came from here, but I think he was like his, his siblings in Athens, Athens, Georgia. You know how our people don't, don't, are not proud Mm. Of their their uh, geographical and other roots. Their roots, yeah. Not only the geographical ones, you know. Mm. But uh, cause, you know, his uh, sisters were from Athens. I don't know how Betty was. She was the oldest. But uh, he claimed he wasn't. So I took that. My mother was from, from uh, born in Charleston, Missouri, and raised in Poplar Bluff. Mm. Poplar Bluff. Mm -hmm. She was. <laughs> now, where, 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 now, so where, where were you born? St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. St. Louis proper or this east? I, I confuse this river thing. This just river. Aren't they trying to reclaim? Aren't they trying to put you all together? Like, take, reclaim, not reclaim, but claim East St. Louis, and they're trying to move you all out of East St. Louis and take over the river and stuff like that. Aren't they doing that these days? Move us out. Well, see, I'm from St. Louis. What do you mean, move us out of East St. Louis? Uh, well, I mean, you know, it seems like the river's right there, and the, 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 the property. I've, I've been walking around. It's, Probably seems to be a little desolated on this side of the river. On yes, the it has been. And that's uh, probably the professor could tell you about the political ramifications and matriculations of that more than me. Mm. I know some of it, but I'll, he probably has a better insight from what's going on behind the scenes. But you know, we we have a shared uh, a, a little shared thing, a little not not shared. I mean, you know, same uh, profession, I guess, because uh, you've been doing radio. You, you did radio. What's I did what, radio what? in the '90s. I had a couple of jazz shows. One at the Webster University, '94 and '95, and the other one uh, in St. Charles at a black gospel station. They decided in like '96, '97. They decided that they wanted to try some jazz because it was all gospel. Mm. So I started coming on from nine to midnight. With, with jazz, and what happened, we had some really irresponsible, more or less, people, mostly ministers, who were late most of the time, and they would call and ask if I could cover until they got there. Sometimes they never got there, mm. but the pay was so low that I was glad, mm. and I was learning gospel, because mm. I didn't know the music like I knew the jazz music and, and the R&B, so it was good because... It gave me a little extra chump change because I, I did that after I left uh, McDonnell Douglas, so I could, I, I could use the little fill-in finances. So when you said so, so you did jet, well, what, what, why did you start doing a jazz program? What, what was your bona fides in, in to do a, a jazz to, to play jazz records, recordings, or whatever? Well, I loved the music ever since I was 14 or 15, and this was an opportunity with someone. Uh, Friend, a friend, a black jazz uh, person recommended me. No, that was the second one. That was the black station. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think who recommended me for Webster University. Oh, I know. Uh, a sister who was uh, the director of multi multicultural affairs at Webster University. Mm -hmm. um, I used to do a lot of uh, photography for her because she always tried to get the black contractors to whether it was food or whatever it was. I think with Maurice and Maurice's Gold Coast catered her her uh, affairs and I covered a word I hate pic picnic you know mm -hmm. I always call it a pick a, yeah outside yeah. I, I mean I always call it a uh, barbecue no 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 I always what the heck I'll call it uh, 
I forget what I call it, but it certainly was never a picnic. And it's, a it's bad, a, bad, bad racial memory? What? <laughs> no, because I found out what the word meant. That's what I mean, bad racial memory. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, well, you said it, I thought you meant that I had had some particular experience. It's like I despise racist, racist and abusive cops, but no one ever, uh, anything but verbal abuse. But I've seen so much, you know. And the verbal abuse can be just something you never forget sometimes. And the guy called me Jughead when I was 16 years old because I didn't turn. I, I never forget, forget it. Remember it like it was yesterday. 16th and uh, 7th, 7th, 7th and Washington and St. Louis Avenue, right outside of Sticks Brand Fuller Department Store. And this white cop was in the middle of the street, mm. and he was undecided. He didn't know what he wanted to do, mm. so he didn't tell me anything. I'm waiting for him to tell me. Mm. He says, come on, Jug, hit, move. And boy, my mama hadn't been in the car. <laughs> I'd probably be getting out of jail wait, now. Wait a second, wait a second. Now, that, that means that you must have been a, well, when was this? this was in the 60s? Which doesn't mean you, you would have been classified as an angry young black man or something like that. I was 16. Mm. 16 years old. Born in 42, so. Never good at math. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I, I don't do like these youngsters now. They'll be at the cash register and they got to pull out a, a, a phone, a, a calculator to tell you your change. Well, let, let's, let's leave let's these young people alone. Let's leave these let's leave young people. Let's go back to this jazz business, you know what I mean? What was your first jazz record that you listened to? I'm not sure. I know it was either the Miles Davis, I can't think of the one. I can see the cover now. I can see the who was on it, you know? so I had Miles Davis, Ima Jamal, and Dave Brubeck. Mm. And I don't know which one was first. I think I might have got all three of them at the same time. Oh, that was definitely the 50s. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so when I was 14, 15, when it started. Mm, 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 mm. What is, what, what, so when you, started, when you started to play this jazz on the, on the radio, what was the response? Remember very you, good, very good. Well, hold on, let me, let me go back. Was this the, which, which, um, let me go back. What was the response at the gospel station? Very what good. The listeners and all. Good, but it, what was ironic was the gospel station. I could hear they could hear me in New Zealand. Really? Yeah. I, well, I was there at night, and that might have had something to do with it. I don't know. Oh, well, but, this was this was AM. This mm, yeah, a, yeah. AM. Oh, that's why. Okay, go ahead. What? Well, that's why. Yeah, because AM waves go, they go. You know. Okay, guys. <laughs> Yeah. The Webster University was good compared to some others, but um, SIU Edwardsville mm -hmm. had the best. Mm -hmm. No, no, that KMOX had the best because mm -hmm. you know they got all the money. Mm -hmm. KMOX, I don't know, it's like 50,000 watts, 100,000 watts, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they were the best KMOX in St. Louis, mm -hmm. which was an AM station. So you got mail from other places in the world? Mail? I mean, how did you know they was listening to you in, in New Zealand? They called. Really? Other people call. But what, what's funny is like women would call you up to tell you, I've got a nice house, I've got a nice mm. job. And, and they sound like. Because you have a nice voice, that's the problem. That's what's going to tell you. Mm. They sounded marvelous. But sometimes you meet these women that sound marvelous in person, they weigh 400 pounds, they cross eyed. <laughs> and they got three teeth. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I see you. I, I, all of this stuff that I've said is not the kind of thing that I should be pro proliferating. A, 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 oh, you think you have a story? You should check out there. Uh, Larry King has a story when he was doing. He was when he was doing radio in uh, in Florida, what? where he puts on a record. What? He goes visit this lady. Uh -huh. The record's a little the record is playing. Yeah, and it starts skipping. Yeah, he's got to head back to the station. <laughs> well, see, I used to when I was at Webster. Sometimes I would play some train records. One of them was forty minutes long. Mm -hmm. I could go to the restroom. I could go across the street, get a, a sandwich or whatever. Come well, forty we, minutes. We should let people know when you say train, you mean John Coltrane. Yes. Okay. Sorry. The Mystic on the mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you would you would take advantage of the long playing record. Well, I mean, I, I had to relieve myself. Mm -hmm. And it took you forty minutes. So were you trying no, to? No, it didn't take me forty minutes. Okay. But I, I don't. I wouldn't have to be stressed. Uh huh. <laughs> it take me about five, probably. Uh -huh. But I have left the building and gone somewhere, and I never had any, you know, like a record skipping like Excuse that. Excuse me. When, when, when you say you left the building, gone somewhere. Don't leave us saying. What do you mean, gone somewhere? Gone, gone to get somewhere? A, Gone to run. 
one of many errands. I don't know what it errands. is. Errands. Errands for my personal errands. Define errands for me. Well, go get some potato chips that they didn't have in the machine in the building. Or uh -huh. whatever, you know. Mm, keep going with, with the whatever. We're going to take all, that. There wasn't nothing in, in, in uh, you didn't get any no significance. Oh. <laughs> I didn't get what? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to lead you on. <laughs> okay, so tell me some radio stories. I want to hear radio stories. Radio stories? What kind of radio stories? I want to hear radio stories. I like radio stories. I don't even know. See, this is like a friend of mine who's a rapper. She wants me to flow. You let me know ahead of time. I have stack stories, but spontaneously, my memory was wonderful a few years ago. Now really? it gets worse and worse and worse. No, you know that's not. You get selective memory. There's things you want to say and things you don't. You no, know. no. I meant what I said. You selected for me. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. I mean, okay, let's. I, I forget stuff, and, and it's the, the the remote is right here. No, what the hell is remote? Looking at it, you know. Oh, that happened to me the other day. Glasses on my head. I was looking for this camera, and the camera was in my hand. I'm looking all over for this I, camera. I do this all the time. Jeez, and people man. think they're the only ones that do it. And they get frustrated. I just tell my mom, Mama, don't get, don't get upset with yourself, because you couldn't remember stuff. I said, I'm 31 years younger than you, and that the same thing happens to me. Mm. You know, it didn't help, though. Well, there you go. You just told a story. Huh? Told a story about what happens. <laughs> what, what, what happens? That, that's, that's a that's a story. You what talk happened? about radio stories. <laughs> I probably could think of some good ones. By the time I get home tonight, you'd be on a plane before I think of them. <laughs> I, I take trains, man. I don't whatever. But I'm not going back to Africa. Just I just haven't like, been on a train. Oh man, I love trains since the ooh, 70s, at least. And they cool. I know a friend of mine loves to ride up to Jeff City and watch the countryside and mm -hmm. go into the, the, the dining car and mm -hmm. drink coffee. And it's cool. I tell you what, I have this aversion to Amtrak because I'm sure many people will tell me that there are not that many wrecks, but it seems like they've been some very highly publicized. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Let's, let's, let's just get off that for a second. One more, one more thing because uh, the writer's club might be starting soon. No, there's nobody club. here. No, that's all right. The transition. First, she was working for you said McDonald Douglas. Mm -hmm. Did some DJ things. Mm -hmm. No, I guess it was was it was a photography through line. You're a photographer, so photography mm -hmm. a through line for you. Did you always do photography? Not always. I, I used to shoot when I was a kid with a little Brownie Hawkeye and another little camera, and I didn't get a decent camera, 35 millimeter camera, until I was like 29, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and shot for the next 40 or so years. Mm -hmm. What yeah. kind of what kind of things did you shoot? Everything, everything, but but uh, porno and uh, <laughs> and 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 investigative photography. I got offers to do investigative photography, and I didn't want to do it. Like tracking people's husband and mm. and uh, doing following criminals. Mm. And I, I, oh, I, the Post Dispatch. I, 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 they were treating me so poorly at McDonnell Douglas that I uh, threatened to join, to go to the Post. I don't want to go to the Post because. They, they rotate you. You'd be garden club, then you'd be sports, then you'd be the politics, and then you'd be doing crime. If I went to on raids, I'd know everybody in the building. Mm. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. I couldn't do that. Because <laughs> I, was, I was covering some of our local underworld guys. They had a, a guy had a, 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 a wedding, mm -hmm. and I did the, the, the bachelor party. Mm -hmm. And they were in there snorting cocaine, having a good old time. Mm -hmm. And a doc, guy looked up at me, he said, what you got the post dispatch? And he, was, he called me the post dispatch just because I had mm -hmm. a couple of Nikon cameras. He, he didn't think I was with the post. He's cussing, carrying on. And the guy was cussing him back. And I'm paying this man to do this, shut up, you know. Mm -hmm. and if I, if I would have been on a raid, let the police, <laughs> mm -hmm. I would be a marked man. Mm -hmm. Well, this brings up another thing. I, I, I know, I know, we should stop, but I have to have to say that there's this whole thing about uh, the underground, the overground, or whatever the thin line between this and that. I mean, is there any difference between uh, what be, be, between so-called criminal uh, sanctions and 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 whatever? No, it's just nuances. Mm -hmm. I don't think, and um, I don't try to justify things. Although I think some things are just justifiable, I just I, I don't think the crimes that the the I even did a sociology uh, report when I was going to University of Missouri St. Louis about that. But the black gangsters could have Cadillacs, but they couldn't have Rolls Royces. I was talking about 
the discrimination within the mafia. Mm. And I got an A in that course. Mm. But they were like, what? Is that is that what happens, you know? Mm. It was all white, you know, as usual, mm -hmm. class. But they really felt like they learned something from that. I also told them that uh, uh, the term X, X uh, up, uptight mm. was twisted by the Caucasians to uptight when Stevie Wonder sang it was a was an honorific term. Yeah. But they twist it. they, they yeah. twist everything. You know, I'm just generalizing naturally. Yeah. I have uh, maybe th six white friends, so I don't it's not like I'm against all Caucasians, that's not it, you know. Mm -hmm. Not not some genuinely good people. I also have I firmly believe what they established about I guess ten years ago that all of us came out of Africa. All of us. That's what that's what the even the white physiologist have acknowledged that you know that the source of life. Well, source of life is one thing, but your experience is a whole other thing. Right? But I'm not talking about that. I'm just just talking about the source of life. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 Naturally, it's like there's some people say there's no such thing as race, you know, and other people say it's a political term. It's, and it's like as long as we know what we're talking about. I got a buddy who he wants to correct me. And I want to tell him, boy, you don't have half the brains. But that would sound so arrogant. But he's always trying to, it's like he's insecure. And he has to, have to, to correct me about something. Well, you know, when you misspeak and he knows exactly what you're talking about, and he interrupts you, and then you lose your train of thought, mm. and I want to slap him. <laughs> <laughs> See, you just did a black thing right there. You uh, just said it. You want to slap. That's a black thing. This, uh, which, which goes back, which goes to the exact, exact point that you was talking about. The changing of the, the meaning of uptight or, or the meaning of cool or whatever. Well, cool remains the same. Yeah. But, but the black language is, or, or black culture, if you want to put it that way, black thought, mm -hmm. black behavior, so informed, so informed the United States of North America. That at some particular point they want to jettison us because they think they know it all, but yet still so we keep on we keep on inventing or reinventing or or remixing or whatever things they can't do without us. I say they. Well, they keep feeding on the things that they've condemned forever, like the the uh, glutus maximus of the female. Now I've had a discussion with black people talking about all white women have white booties. No, they have flat booties. No, they don't. I knew some in the 50s that were just as round and bulbous and beautiful, but that is the uh, minority. Mm. You know, and I, I know my play sister's fine as wine, but she's flat as a board. Mm. You know, and she's black, dark skinned black. Mm. But, uh, and there's, you know, this, this, this thing of, of uh, stereotyping things is, is uh, it's, it's dangerous, mm. you know. And we'll be we'll be arguing about something like that, which who cares? But mm -hmm. then it goes on to other things where they assume something, like the thing a guy was abusive to uh, uh, his white girl, and the sister said, "Oh no, sister's gonna take that shit." Uh, duh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> mm -hmm. There have been some sisters that took a lot of stuff, and some white girls that pull a razor on you, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I speak thinking of that. When I was taking Afro-American literature at the University of Missouri, mm -hmm. they had a, uh, one of the most learned uh, about the subject in the class was a white girl. Mm -hmm. And the second one was a Native American. Hello, yeah. how's everybody? All right now. So, Ross Crunch, we gotta leave it here because we got things to do. Thank you for this little bit of time. You, you mean to tell me? Huh? Hey, y'all. That yeah, that's what I mean to tell you. What I heard of it. Awesome. You take care. Yeah. Uh, what, you leaving? Yeah, you leaving. I'm Cam staying. Camera leaving you. Oh, okay. <laughs> now you said take care. I thought you just came in here just to interview me and then catch a plane. <laughs> <laughs> or a train. I'm sorry. You said, said you like trains.